Here's a sheet I've prepared to demonstrate the effect of light on two specific subjects, a tree and a flower. Now let's start with the one on the left. This tree is going to be a tree observed on an overcast day. And I hope you'll bear with me while I just start to rough in the foliage of the tree. Now, on an overcast day, the light is cool and even. And although there may be some light from above, from the sky, overall the light will be soft and gentle. And there won't be any bright contrasts of light and dark on the tree, on the foliage or on the trunk or even on the ground. It's all too easy to just fall into the trap of picking up a green or a brown or grey for the tree trunk because intellectually you know that a tree is green or the foliage on the tree is green. But I want you to try now with your newfound knowledge and wisdom to really observe carefully to see what the light is doing to the colours in front of you. Let's pop in a bit of trunk here and branches. Just a suggestion. And down onto the ground here. greenery under the tree. And on an overcast day, the light, the sky, may be quite even and greyed, a sort of greyish blue. So I'll just pop some blue around the tree so that you get a sense of the sky behind. very quickly there. Now, this same tree will positively come to life and glow on a sun-filled day. So let's move across to the second tree here. Let's pull it a little bit closer to me. This time, the contrasts will be much stronger. The shadowy areas will be quite dark and rich. There may still be areas of local colour where the light is a little bit more even. Let's first of all establish the underneaths of the clumps of foliage and then the middle tone here. we've got to start to look a lot more carefully. Now, if it's sunlight that's bouncing onto our subject, the lightest areas will obviously be warmer. Sunlight, sunlight itself is warm. It's a logical thing, isn't it? And greens, warm greens, if you think back to the lesson we looked at a few minutes ago, warm greens are yellower move towards yellow. So to get the impression of warm light on the tree, I'm now going to start to build in some touches of much more yellow green. Perhaps there wouldn't be quite so much on this clump here, which is there may be a shadow cast onto this area of foliage from the pieces above, the branches and the foliage above. and perhaps even a much brighter yellowy green in places. And let's, let's think about the tree trunks too. We use our brown. This is a little bit simplistic, but it's just to try to make the point for you. 
round for the branches and perhaps in some areas even the branches may pick up a little bit of light from the sun in places which just the light just bounces off the trunks and then on the ground we'd probably have the shadow of the tree cast by the tree in fact it would probably be a slightly cooler green warm light tends to throw cool shadows it's a useful little rule of thumb and then the grass surrounding the shadowy area would be much warmer again and this time perhaps the sky will be brighter let's start with the same sort of blue that I used before but I'll build in some much brighter blue No, that's too grey. Let's find something brighter in my box. And we really start now to get the impression because of the blue against the brightly lit foliage at the top here, we really do start to get the impression of sunlight on the scene, don't we? I hope you'll agree. Now, using your observation is very difficult, indeed, to try to pick up the colours to create the impression that you want. But I can promise you, it really will pay off if you do. You'll be delighted to find your pictures coming together with lots of brilliance and life. We'll just compare these two trees now. Can you see how beautifully light and sunny this one looks by comparison with this one, particularly if I make the sky a little greyer in places, with a suggestion of cloud as you would get with an overcast sky. It's much less contrast of the sky and the tree.